Hi, fifth grade. Today in math, we are doing our last lesson from unit five. So this is lesson 5.10, and it is over decimals, multiplying and dividing. So remember, unit four was over just multiplying decimals. Unit five this whole time has just been over dividing decimals. And today we're just gonna kind of review everything that we know. They're throwing multiplication and division together just to review all of those skills since we kind of had split it up over two units. There is one new thing that we have to talk about today and that is powers of 10. If you remember back to unit four, we learned how to multiply with powers of 10, which is what we're gonna start with. But then we're also going to look at dividing powers of 10 today, which is new, but it's pretty simple. So I think you'll be able to catch on pretty quickly. And then we will look at a few word problems to decide if we are going to multiply or divide on those. But really today is kind of just a review once we figure out how to divide with these powers of 10. So let's jump right on in and then you can go on your assignment after we finish the notes. First, starting with our powers of 10, let's review with our multiplication. So on number one, we have 0 0.6 times 10 to the power of one. Remember, we're paying attention to this exponent right here because that exponent tells me how many spots back I need to move my decimal. So when I'm multiplying, this tells me how many spots back I need to move my decimal. So I need to move it one spot back. And then I just rewrite my number with the decimal in its new spot. That would be 6.0. Remember, you could leave this zero in front. So I could have put 0, 06.0, but I can also leave it off. Either way is completely fine. The next one is times 10 to the power of two. So I need to move my decimal two spots. Remember when I move it two spots, if I have an empty loop, I fill that in with a zero. So my new number with the decimal in its new spot would be 60.0. And finally, down below that, we have 10 to the power of three, which means I need to move my decimal back three spots. One, two, three. And if I have empty loops, I fill them in with zeros, which would mean if I rewrote my number with the decimal in its new spot, it would be 600.0. I'm going pretty quickly because this is a review. We already learned this in unit four. Let's do another example with number two. I have 3.8 times 10 to the power of one. So remember that one tells me I move my decimal back one spot. So that would be 38.0. This one is times 10 to the power of two, so I would need to move it two spots, filling in my extra loop with a zero, so that would be 380.0. And finally down here, 10 to the power of three would mean I need to move my decimal back three spots, leaving me with two empty loops. When I fill those in, I get 3,800.0. Make sure you draw your loops, fill in the extra one with zeros, rewrite your number with the decimal in its new spot. Number three is a tiny bit different. We just have to remember there is no decimal in this number, so I'm still multiplying by a power of 10. What does this little number tell me when there's no decimal? Yeah, that just means I need to add that many zeros. So this would turn into 560. Or if I go back here, this has a power of two, so 56, and then I would add two zeros behind it which would be 5,600. And finally, right here with a power of three, that would be 56 with three zeros behind it, which would be 56,000. Again, I went quickly because that is review. Now, as I scooch down to number four, this is a little bit new because now I'm still doing powers of 10. It looks almost identical to what we just did, except we are dividing. So we have to pay close attention to our signs. Dividing is just exactly the opposite of multiplication. So here I have 7.8 divided by 10 to the power of one. I'm still going to pay attention to my exponent because that tells me how many times to move my decimal. But if I'm dividing, I have to move it forward. So I'm gonna move it the opposite way. We have to move it forward that many spots because when I'm multiplying, I want the numbers to get bigger, so I move my decimal backwards. When we're dividing, the numbers should get smaller, so we move our decimal forward. That's the only difference. It's kind of tricky because you have to figure out which way to move it. You gotta think about it. So with dividing by a power of 10, I move my decimal forward, 
So with my decimal in its new spot, my number would be 0 0.78. Then if I go down to the next one, I have 10 to the power of 2. So I need to move my decimal forward two spots because I'm dividing. So my number needs to get smaller. Same thing, if I have an empty loop, I fill it in with a 0. So my answer would be 0 0.078. Again, dividing by 10 to the power of 3 means I need to move my decimal forward three spots. One, two, three, making sure I draw those loops. Empty loops get zeros, so that would be 0 0.0078. Same process, I'm just moving the opposite way because we're doing the opposite operation. We were multiplying, now we're dividing, which is the exact opposite of each other, so we move it the opposite way. It has to move forwards now. Let's try again on this one. I have 50.7 divided by 10 to the power of 1. So paying attention to my exponent, my decimal needs to move forward one spot because I'm dividing. So that would be 5.07. Next, I'm dividing by 10 to the power of 2. So it has to move forward two spots, which would be 0 0.507. And finally, 10 to the power of 3 would move it forward three spots, meaning I have an extra loop, so I have to add a zero, so 0 0.0507. You really have to draw those loops so that you don't get confused on where your decimal needs to go at. Now number six is a little bit tricky because it doesn't have a decimal, but we can add a decimal in there. We need to so that we know where we would move it from if we need to move it forward. So where would my decimal go in a number that does not have a decimal? It would go at the back. Remember, if a number doesn't have a decimal, the decimal's just at the back. So if it doesn't have a decimal, I'm just gonna add it back there and then I do the same thing. 125 divided by 10 to the power of one, well, I just move that decimal forward one spot. So it would be 12.5. Divided by 10 to the power of two down here would mean I need to take this decimal and move it forward two spots. So 1.25 and divided by 10 to the power of three means I have to move it forward three spots, so 0 0.125. So doing the exact same thing, I just had to remember to put the decimal at the back because there wasn't a decimal in that number. Anytime there's not a decimal, we just add it at the back of the number if we need to be able to move it. Alrighty, I'm gonna go on down here. Now, we are also being asked to tell the difference between a multiplication and a division word problem. And these get a little bit tricky with decimals, if I'm being honest. The easiest way for me to decide is I look for the multiplication keywords. There is usually a pretty good keyword that tells me if I need to multiply. But when I'm working with decimals, there's not always a good keyword that tells me to divide. So I don't even worry about division keywords. I look at the decimals and I look for a multiplication keyword. And if I find a keyword to multiply, then I know I should multiply. If I don't find a keyword, then I know that one's probably division. Okay, now remember, if I have decimals, it could also be addition or subtraction, and those would also have good keywords. The only thing that doesn't really have good keywords when it comes to decimals is division a lot of the times. But I know today it has to either be multiply or divide. So today I'm just gonna say, look for multiplication keywords. If you find a keyword that tells you to multiply, obviously on that one you have to multiply. If you can't find a good keyword, it probably means you're supposed to divide. So let's see about number seven and eight. Number seven, last year 135 cows on Dixie's dairy farm had calves. This year, 0 0.6 times that many cows had calves. How many cows had calves this year? I'm looking for any keywords that I could find, and I found one. Times. Times is definitely going to tell me that I should be multiplying. So this one has to be multiply. Then I'm going to go ahead and multiply it out to see what the answer would be. So 135 times 0 0.6. Remember, any of these zeros in front, I can color in so that we can ignore them, and then I multiply just like normal. Six times five is 30, put my zero, carry my three. Six times three is 18, plus three more would be 21, put my one, carry my two. And six times one is six, 
plus two more would be eight. Then remember, I have to have a decimal in my answer if I was multiplying by a decimal. So count up how many spots are behind the decimal. That's just one. So my decimal would need to go right here in my answer. So 81.0 is just like 81. And then I need my label, 81 cows. Remember, look for that how many. Usually the word that comes right behind it is your label. So 81 cows had calves this year. All right, let's go on down to number eight. This is our last one in the notes, and then you can start on your assignment. Gus ran 3.6 miles. He took a sip of water every 0 0.9 miles. How many sips did he take? First, I'm looking through for my keywords. I didn't really find any keywords in there that stood out to me. So I don't think it's multiply. I didn't see any of those keywords. So this one I think is going to be divide. Remember, there's not really any good division keywords a lot of the time. So if I don't find good multiplication keywords, or if I know that it's not adding or subtracting, division is obviously going to be the option. Now, the tricky part is figuring out which number goes inside the house. Remember, the total amount goes inside the house. So the total amount that he ran is 3.6. So that goes in my house. And 0 0.9 has to go on the outside. We cannot divide by a decimal. So what do I have to do outside the house to fix this problem? I've got to move it back one. Then I have to do something inside my house. So look in here. What do I need to do inside my house if I did that outside? I also have to move this back one. We have to do the same. All right, then I'm gonna cross out that zero. We're basically just dividing by nine here. How many nines will go into 36? That would be a four. Nine times four is 36. When I subtract, that's a zero. I don't have anything to bring down, and I didn't pass my decimal because my new decimal's right here and we never went past it. So my answer is just four. Careful on my label, how many sips? So four sips would be my final answer. All right, as you go to look at your assignment, you will notice we did number three together in class on the homework side. Make sure that you take a close look at that and see what we did before you start because we did have to review a little bit of multiplying with some decimals with lots of zeros in there. So take a good look at that and work on your assignment. Good luck, you've got it. Bye.